Hi, Salika here for Peak Survival. Now I'm doing a more serious video this time, and this is concerning water filtration. I've noticed on many forums that people are, are commenting that they, they've never used a water filtration device or don't even bother with it, and they've been fine. Uh, I'm relieved to hear that you are fine, but I have to be honest with you, you are playing a game of Russian roulette with this, uh, this issue. Um, many of you may not be aware of these facts, but they're really concerning and I think it's imperative that I share these with you. Now, 93% of uh, surface water in the U.S. is contaminated. 80% of diseases in developing countries are spread by water-contaminated uh, diseases. Um, and then, this is the most shocking of them all, 25 million people a year die for water from waterborne pathogens 25 million now you've been very lucky but please don't be part of these st statistics so um this is why we're doing these videos and i'm going to cover a few of the uh, the topics related to what's in the water um you can survive between three and four days without water but after the first day trust me you're going to start feeling the effects mentally and uh, phys physically um, depending on where you are whether it's warm environment or you have a lot of uh, physical tasks to do like building a shelter or hunting uh, after that first day you're going to want to replenish your 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 water supply so I recommend that you drink minimum a quart of water a day. More is obviously better, but uh, you got to think about yourself because after building your shelter, water is a huge priority and it's not something to be taken lightly. So I'm going to give you a bit more information on what's in the water and uh, what you can use to filter it. Now we have bacteria. Bacteria is 0.3 microns, so a ceramic filter or hollow fiber technology filter will do the job. Um, things that you're going to experience, salmonella, cholera, E. coli, these are not fun to have at all. It can take anywhere between six hours to even three days before you start feeling the effects and they're pretty nasty. Um, now the way to uh, you know avoid these is by boiling UV or a filter. Now just to give you an example of how tiny 0.3 microns is, uh, a single strand of human hair is 76 microns. So 0.3 is really small. Protozoa. Protozoa are 3 to 10 microns. They're much bigger. Um, and uh, you can get sick with Cryptosporidium and Giardia. Now these are really, really nasty. Um, I've met a few people on the trail, the Appalachian Trail, and even people who knew people who got Giardia or um, Cryptosporidium. And these are really nasty. And these two are actually, um, you know, they can, they're, they're the difference sometimes between life and death, to be honest with you. Um, you can get nasty cramps, vom vomiting, diarrhea, and if you're hiking alone or you're really far away from a town, um, you can get severely dehydrated and eventually die. So this is not to be taken lightly. Now, um, if there's anything you could take away from this video is uh, in tough or cold conditions, um, these uh, protozoa can uh, turn into cysts, which are much harder to kill with iodine and chlorine. And uh, so basically by boiling uh, UV or uh, a really sturdy, a filter, you'll cover that. Basically what happens is if you do consume it uh, as a cyst, eventually it'll warm up and reactivate itself in your system. So very, very important to remember. Next category, viruses. Now, these are less prominent, obviously, in backcountry areas. This is more where there's a lot more people, people get in contact with each other. Uh, there we go, I'll clear this up for you. So they're point zero six microns. And uh, basically, uh, these are, uh, they, they involve cells, right? So it needs a host to replicate. You can get Hep A, polio, Norwalk. I don't know if you're familiar with Norwalk, but recently um, there was a cruise ship where a whole bunch of people got uh, really sick with Norwalk and it spreads pretty quickly. It's really nasty, don't want to have that. So basically, 
um, you know, viruses usually attack larger particles, so um, these can be filtered pretty effectively because they'll get bigger, essentially attached to a larger um, mass. Uh, you can basically use iodine, chlorine, uh, boiling, or UV for viruses. So there you have it, really serious stuff. So in the future, for those of you who haven't uh, started filtering, this might be something to start considering. And um, for those of you that are just new to outdoor uh, survival or hiking, backcountry skiing, whatever the reason, um, it's really important that if you are gonna do any, uh, any you know, consumption of water that you consider filtering or using iodine tablets, whatever. Um, so this has been uh, Salika for Peak Survival. Feel free to leave comments and uh, welcome to our new subscribers.